Welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about how state of the universe causality makes free will impossible. Um, okay, this is this should be a very significant significant show. Um, maybe historically, actually, because this whole program is historically significant. This whole issue coming into the uh, forefront of public awareness is like historical. But um, but yeah, this this episode is important because it explains why free will is impossible from the most basic, fundamental, and general perspective. Okay, um, so let's let's begin. Um, well, actually, before we begin, um, we define free will as being able to control what we do, uh, not having aspects of reality that we're not in control of decide what we do. So, for example, because we have an unconscious where all of our memories are stored, and because we can't consciously access that unconscious at will, um, whenever we make a decision, we have to rely on that information. Now, obviously, if our conscious mind isn't relying on it to make the decision, it has to be the unconscious mind. So you have the unconscious mind sifting through the data, our past experiences and all, and you know, working with the programming to decide um, according to what the unconscious has stored. So it's a, it's a completely unconscious process. Anyway, that's a good explanation. I, I got to do another show about that. I've done several. But this show is about um, basic causality, cause and effect. Okay, you, you start out with the understanding that everything has a cause. Okay, um, nothing just happens. You know, that's the thing. There's like something happens because something caused it to happen. Um, the only other alternative to causality, cause and effect, is randomness. And um, randomness, true randomness, meaning uncaused, some people, you know, would define it that way. Some people define it as unpredictable. But true randomness um, doesn't exist. You know, nothing happens that is uncaused. You know, um, there for decades, um, science has been claiming, well, you know, we know everything that's going on, physicists, in, in this process, and we can't see what's making it do what it does, radioactive decay, whatever it is. And they arrogantly, wrongly conclude that because they can't see what's going on, nothing can be going on, which is an absurd, unscientific conclusion. But um, nonetheless, it is, um, it is out there among some physicists. Um, so. The idea is that um, that because there is no true randomness, um, because everything must have a cause, um, that sets the stage for um, understanding why we don't have free will from this most basic perspective of the state of the universe. Because, because, um, all right. We might say that if I move my hand like that, the cause of that motion was um, my decision to move the hand like that. You know, and then there was a cause directly related to that that you know, is happening to me. Okay, that's one way to understand causality. Um, and it's, it's a perspective. But the most un encompassing perspective, the most universal perspective, is to consider the entire universe. You know, some people claim there are multiverses, which is, 
kind of plays a bit with the language because literally universe means one reality. And if you were to have quote unquote multiverses, they would actually be a part of a larger one reality. So, but, um, but that's the idea. What's happening is we have one reality and we don't have to take it back to um, a point in time that transcends lo logic, actually, to, to demonstrate how this state of the universe causality makes free will impossible. In other words, like there's a, you know, our minds can't, um, can't really understand how, you know, reality could be eternal because we think, well, it must have started at one point or reality had a beginning at a certain point because like, well, you know, what, what came before that, what created it. So, you know, at a certain level, at that level, logic is transcended. Um, there's something in the universe that, um, that is beyond this logic. Um, but that, that, um, that's not really consequential to this issue of, of human will because we can pick any moment in the history of the universe and, um, and explain and understand and show how the evolution of that universe from then to now makes free will impossible, which is, you know, what we're doing now. Um, so let's pick the Big Bang. Um, 13.7 billion years ago, I believe, some, somewhere around there. Um, you have the moment of the Big Bang. Then you have the next moment, okay? That next moment is completely determined by that previous moment. Um, a good way to understand that is that reality is matter, mass energy, moving through space in time. So time is represented by the moments, and the universe is the entirety of all mass energy. So you have, you have it in one state at the first moment, um, which raises some questions, I suppose, but then the next moment is, again, completely determined, comes about completely as a result of the motion of mass energy at the first moment of the Big Bang through time to the second moment. You know, the, the, the forces that were at work there, it, it's hard to, um, some people say that maybe gravity didn't exist then, I don't know. I haven't really researched that aspect of it. But just the idea that whatever physical natural forces are acting on mass energy at that time caused that moment by moment change in the universe. So, all right, now to understand how free will is therefore impossible, just extend that causal chain. The second moment in the universe was completely dependent upon and caused by the first moment. The third moment in the universe was completely caused by the second moment, which was caused by the first. Then you have the third moment causing the fourth moment, the fourth moment, moment causing the fifth moment. And, you know, ultimately, because time only goes in one direction from past to present to future, you have these moments, time going by, until this present moment right here. And so everything I'm saying to you, everything you're hearing and seeing right now, everything that exists is a complete and direct result of that causal sequence that we followed from the moment of the Big Bang. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. The effect becomes the cause of the next effect. Okay, it's simple. Everything happens according to this causal law. Um, 
Another way to understand, well, now I was going to get into the idea of, of change, because change is essentially the basic process in the universe, but that's, change is really another, it's a synonym in a sense for causality. You know, change, um, without change, the universe would be static. There'd be no motion. There'd be no causality. Nothing would be causing anything. Okay. Um, so, I think that, um, I think that, that pretty much explains why, um, why, you know, state, how state of the universe causality makes free will impossible. But, um, but you know, some, some of us might um, wrongly surmise or conclude that, um, that our thoughts are not physical, that our thoughts are spiritual, and therefore, the, the, what I just described does not apply to them. But that is, that's a mistaken conclusion, and let me, let me explain exactly how and why. Um, let's, say, let's say, you know, I make a decision at this moment, and, um, and we're going to define it as, as a spiritual decision. It has no physical properties. But right there, we run into a huge problem because, um, because, um, Um, okay, I got I got to like work also on the um, I think the, the next show no all right right there you run into a big problem I'm sorry because the um, the decision okay the decision that um, that you've made that I've made occupies a place in time. Okay? I made it at that moment, however many seconds ago that was. Actually, I didn't make a decision. I guess maybe I made the decision to, to make, to, um, to do this explanation. All right, so, so it's the fact, it's the fact that this um, quote-unquote spiritual decision is made, um, in time that makes it physical. So uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I should have like prepared this part of it, um, whatchamacallit, um, before, I think. I don't know, something distracting me. But um, anyway, um, so the idea is once, once you realize, one, that, that the decision occupies a place in time, it was made at a certain moment, and two, that as Einstein um, explained, um, space and time are one entity, are one reality, then you understand that if a decision is made, occupies a space and time, it's also a physical entity. You know, granted, we don't have the mechanisms, the technology, the uh, the physical, biological properties to detect the physicality of, of um, these spiritual thoughts, decisions, but nonetheless, again, because they occupy space and time, they are completely physical. Okay, so let's see where we are here. Um, all right, this is, um, I think we've done enough on this, and I've got about, like, I've got, I've got a lot of time. This is cool. This is cool. We're going to just like um, basically talk about what it means to um, to see the world in a causal with a causal perspective. Because um, I've been doing this, like you know, once once you kind of like get that the universe is causal, that free will is an illusion, that everything's a movie, then um, when you think about that enough. The next step is like applying that to, to your life. And I, I have been having amazing success with this. I mean, what happens is like one of the, one of the chief 
detriments, chief um, problems about the illusion of free will is that it provides a mistaken rationale for, um, for blame. You know, in other words, if um, to the extent that we ascribe free will to others and to ourselves, then that gives us reason to blame others or ourselves. But, um, oh, but, um, <laughs> all right, but here's the thing. Um, when, when we, um, when we understand that, that, um, free will is an illusion, that, um, that everything's a movie, that everything's causal, that our will, our human will is causal, um, all of a sudden there is no reason there is no rationale to blame anyone for anything. And that is a cool, a cool, extremely cool and um, revolutionary perspective. Because, um, for example, in my life, you know, all right, if we had a free will, first of all, let's, let's do this. If we had a free will, we would be choosing all of our thoughts, so we would be choosing positive pleasant thoughts all the time, period. Um, but we don't have a free will, so a lot of times thoughts that are negative, that are unpleasant, that are mistaken, you know, will come into our minds. Like, for example, um, somebody does something that we consider wrong. Um, and you know, with the, with the um, free will perspective, we we you know we blame them. We say you know they are culpable, um, and that that perspective actually um, generates anger toward the person. In other words, like. There's anger that may be the first reaction. Anger, psychologically, is um, a reaction to a, perce a perceived injustice. Okay, that's like, you know, we become angry when we say, wait a minute, this isn't the way it should be. Okay, but then like what happens is with a free will perspective, we say, well, that person um, is responsible and so that we direct that anger toward that person and you know because of that free will perspective then you know a lot of times um well basically um it's an unpleasant emotion um and a lot of times it's mistaken so so anyway like when when we understand that human will is causal Again, um, we understand that there's no good reason to blame another for anything. So what happens is like each time one of these thoughts, one of these, these um, uninvited negative thoughts about someone comes into our mind, we get better. I'm getting better and better at more quickly reminding myself that they're not at fault, they're not at blame, and the, the anger toward them vanishes, and, um, and I am um, freed that negative experience, and they are freed the consequences of my negative experience, or as a potential consequences, whatever. Um, it's very, very cool. Now, there's, there's another consideration, actually. Um, you know, some people will say, well, wait a minute, all right, um, you don't want to blame people, but there will be cir circumstances, perhaps, when um, you would have to act, like, for example, in self-defense, because of a person's um, actions toward you. And so, yeah. All right, granted, I mean, like, you know, it, it, it'd be nice if, if reality um, came to be different, but for the time being, that's a, a prospect, and so what, 
you know, but the idea is like with a causal world perspective, you're doing that without personal animosity, you know, and, um, you know, some people might debate, all right, well, maybe personal animosity may help, you know, in, in um, fighting or fleeing, whatever, you know, <laughs> but, um, but, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a more pleasant experience. And, and you know, I, I think at a certain level, you know, with, the, with those kinds of threats, um, you know, we have our, um, our hardwired survival instinct that just kicks in, you know. It doesn't go through the, uh, the process of determining who's to blame for what. It just does. So, you know, so like, so for people who believe, who think that civilization is going to crumble, that everything's going to break down, because um, we don't have free wills. No, it's, it's just not because, um, because we have a survival instinct. I've done a, a show on this. Okay. Um, let's see. I, we've got about six minutes left, and I'm just looking through my notes, and I noticed that um, I didn't talk about something that I think is kind of important. Um, relative to the state of, to the state of the universe um, causality making free will impossible um, okay the idea is that um, you have that state of the universe causing the next state right so you've got one state and, and like you know I guess like with yeah with quantum physics they kind of like demonstrated that it is a state by state progression, you know, uh, it's quantitized rather than being fluid, um, at least as far as we know, who knows, there, there may actually be um, an ultimate fluidity be, you know, beyond quantum mechanics, but, um, but the idea is like, you know, one moment of the universe causes the next, and, and the, the, what I'm trying to um, present now is the um, explanation that nothing can inject itself into that causal, that cause and effect. Nothing can come between the cause and the effect. You know, the cause is the complete description of the effect, cause, you know, that and, and the forces of nature. And um, the other thing is, like, in terms of, um, yeah, I want to, I want to, like, um, take a few minutes to, to describe um, another way of, of seeing the causality in the universe or of, of you know, providing extremely strong evidence um, that therefore, you know, negates, uh, refutes free will. Okay. Um, there's a law of physics called the conservation of mass energy. Um, and um, it's never been violated. You know, I think there there have been some claims that um, that quantum mechanics allows for a a moment of violation to that, but I, I have a feeling that's an interpretation. I, that that just doesn't, um, you know, that's again some scientists saying, well, we can't see what's happening here, um, and so they're going to make a conclusion based on what they can't see. So um, so the idea is that like with the law of conservation of mass energy. Um, you have, it basically states that mass energy is never lost. You know, you have, let's say, one particle imparting mass energy to the second particle. That increase in mass energy in the second particle is a complete effect of the, um, of, you know, the, the process of nature and the, you know, the first particle's um, mass energy. So the idea is like, all right, mass energy is never lost. So the first particle doesn't, um, the first particle loses mass energy and the second particle um, gains it. Always. You, you can never lose mass energy um, in a reaction. So what happens is, if that's a fundamental law of nature, this conservation of mass energy, and it requires causality because the cause of the increase in mass energy of the second particle is the interaction with the first particle, 
then you have another major, major physical law demonstrating how causality rules the universe and how free will must therefore be an illusion. Okay, we've got like about two minutes left. So this has been a good show. Um, new format. Um, I'm losing the, um, the suit and tie. I want to reach a, a different audience. You know, I've done 20 episodes with the suit and tie. Um, I want to reach Facebook people. I want to reach um, young people. I like this set, okay? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to like tweak, or, tweak around, um, tweak it a bit, maybe, I guess. You know, I'm going to work on it, but, but it, it looks good. Cameras, I got to change. Um, but, um, oh, huh, I got to figure this out. Okay, yeah, and so, so it's going well. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Um, yeah, my, uh, my good friend Nick is producing a show for Manhattan Cable that if all goes well, I mean, we, we've already taped um, three episodes. We've, we've shown two of them, I think, by now, maybe just one. And um, we're shooting for um, a call-in show, you know, for September. So that should be awesome. Um, I'll let you know how that um, comes along. Okay, we got 38 seconds. Um, all right, I hope that, um, you know, I've helped you understand how even if our thoughts are spiritual, they can't be free because of this state-by-state state causality of the universe. Um, and, you know, think about this again. Try to apply this to your own life as I've been doing because I'm telling you, it, it's just like... It helps you zap the negative feelings. It helps you zap the negative feelings that, um, that blame evokes, that blame creates. All right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon.